Yo guys, what is going on? So in this video, we're going to be having a look at a series of things. First off, we're going to unbox the phone. Next, after that, we're going to skim through the setup, and then we're going to dive into the settings and have a look at the new settings, which are specific and more interesting towards this phone. And that includes having a look at the display fingerprint and the facial recognition and all that. And then after that, we're going to do a speaker test and a camera test, and I'm going to quickly go through the specs. And here it is. So, orangish red. Not usually a fan, but I can't hate on this. Another thing you're going to notice about this box specifically is that it's really, really tall. But you know what? It's minimal, it's simple, it's to the point. This is my favorite looking box ever. So, let's dive into the unboxing. But, right after the intro. You thought I forgot about that, didn't you? So, OnePlus are keeping it real with a pull tab at the top of the box. Wait a second, let's hit pause real quick, because in the description is a link to get you 30 days of Amazon Prime for free. All you gotta do is make an account, and after you do that and you put all your card details in, go ahead and cancel the subscription so it will automatically end after your free trial ends so that it doesn't charge your card after the 30 days. But you'll be able to get next day deliveries on tons of items. And literally every item on Amazon exists, even a projection keyboard. On top of that, you're getting tens of thousands of movies and TV shows on Amazon Prime, Two and a Half Men, Modern Family, and Prime Originals. Plus Prime Music, so you can go ahead and cancel your Spotify subscription. And all of this is only for 8 quid a month. So if you're interested, check that out now. So this being one of the first steps to unboxing a phone tends to be one of the most satisfying. But what I came to find was underneath the plastic wrapping, You'd expect this box to feel like cardboard, but it felt more like rubber. Everything about this box, to be honest, just looks amazing, and it only got better. Apple used to give one of the best unboxing experiences ever. They just kind of give you this vibe. But you know what? This is the best smartphone box for any phone ever. Now, my first concern was this was going to be too big. It's basically a 6.8 inch phone. And I originally was very against that, but just so you know, that box has been unticked. It is not too big, it is pretty much the same as my Galaxy S10 Plus. And having held it, it already feels like the real deal. Now, underneath here, we actually have two screen protectors, which was really, really cool. I didn't expect that. Plus, you're getting the stickers, which is a nice selection of stickers there. Companies don't usually do something like that. And a bunch of letters and stuff. And alongside that, you're getting a case. It's a see-through case with their slogan, Never Settle. So it's cool that they added that in there. Now, next in the box is that super sexy OnePlus charging cable that works with the 30-watt power adapter that comes with the OnePlus to give you 60% in 30 minutes. Now, that is insane. And alongside that, if you use their charger, you have 30-watt wireless charging, and you can get 50% in 25 minutes. Now, here comes my favorite part. Now, I don't know if you saw, but I nearly dropped the phone. So first things first, this phone is slippery. But also, this phone feels amazing. I love the Onyx Black version more than I thought I'd like it. I was originally worried about the glossy finish, and I still kind of wish it was matte, because that would look really, really nice. And I know this is going to be a fingerprint magnet for a fact, but it still looks so, so good. This is my favorite black color. Now, in terms of build quality, this is better than an iPhone. This is probably the highest build quality in a phone ever, in my opinion. The camera bump is legit. Usually, I think YouTubers are overreacting when they start talking about the camera bump, but I remember I first placed it on a table about 30 minutes after this, and it looked unstable. Like, it looked a little bit worrying, to be honest, but it was okay. And then within that badass 120 hertz display, is a punch hole camera. Now, I'm not too sure how I feel about this. I was kind of upset to find out that it wasn't gonna have a pop-up camera. So yeah, I've got a few mixed feelings there, just out of preference. And then down here, we have a USB-C port, a SIM card tray, and a speaker grill. And I came to find that the SIM card tray here was actually very stable, so SIM cards aren't gonna fall out, basically, when you come to take it out. And if we flip it around, you can kind of see that camera bump again. 
and a microphone, but there's not actually anything that you have to worry about. What's kind of interesting though is there's this little dip in terms of design and aesthetics, which is kind of cool to see. On the left, you got the volume button. On the right, you've got the power button, which also doubles as a assistant key. And you have the alert slider for vibration, silent, and ring, which is really convenient. So it's awesome that OnePlus are still doing that. Finally, having a look at the case, which looks pretty nice, fitting that on there. It is see-through plastic, nothing special. You got the Never Settle, which kind of shows on the Onyx back version especially. And it doesn't look bad from the front, it looks decent from the side. It looked better than I thought it would be, I'm not usually a fan of clear cases. But yeah, let's go into the setup. Now, first few things you're gonna wanna know is that this guy has an in-display fingerprint a 120 hertz and 1440p display which is an incredible start already the display is is the gateway which you use to interact with the phone so if the display is up there then you've already taken the quality of the phone up by an absolute crap load but yeah i don't really want to bore you with the setup it includes going through google accounts and doing all that and logging into wi-fi setting up the passcode and all that but this is where it gets interesting this is the in display fingerprint it took me a while it Errored a bunch of times, which was really annoying, but you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. It worked in the end and it works fine now. And something I learned by just interacting with the phone for a little bit of time was that the haptics were amazing and they were improved as well. Haptics are basically the vibrations, and like an iPhone, it's basically iPhone level where it feels like you're clicking, so that's really, really nice. And now it's asking me whether I want to use recent home and back buttons or just the gestures of swiping up and all that. I definitely prefer gestures. I'm really happy that they added this with Android Pie and it works really well. It's optimized to work very, very well with Oxygen OS. Now here, I just thought it was a good time to clean my phone, but moving on, it teaches you how to use the navigation gestures in case you haven't used them before. And once you're done with that, you click next and it's done. The setup is over and you have opened the phone. Now don't worry, I'm about to turn down the brightness because I know that was probably bugging a few of you, bugged me when I found out that it was overexposed. But anyway, first thing I wanted to do was just swipe through the app drawer, swipe through the panel, and I realized it was already on 120 hertz out the box, so that was great. Basically meaning that the screen refreshes 120 times rather than 60 times on the majority of phones. And then once you've entered the quick panel and gone into settings, first things first, open display, and then you can choose the vibrance of the colors. Now, I put this setting on. I prefer the way it looked. It takes advantage of the AMOLED display. Next is motion graphics, smoothing, also MEMC, which basically means it upscales 24 FPS videos to 60 FPS or even higher, and it might even scale 60 frame videos to higher so it works with that new refresh rate so we'll make videos look smoother so that's a really cool feature I thought so I turned it on and then if you go into the advanced settings you can take it up from 1080p to quad HD which is 1440p or if you want to be fancy about it you can call it 3k and then you can change the refresh rate from 120 Hertz to 60 Hertz or vice versa if you want better battery or a better refresh rate now, some people are going to be wanting this. The camera display area lets you hide the punch hole cutout. It looks like a Pixel 4, not really my vibe, but I'm going to change it back. If you like that, then that's where the setting is. Now, the beauty of Oxygen OS is you have so much customization, like the animation of the fingerprint sensor. You can change the shape of the icons. You can change the accent color for the whole OS. You can download an icon pack and use it with your standard home screen. Oxygen OS gives you all these features, so that's awesome. Now, here's the facial recognition, and this is supposedly going to be very, very fast. So you scan your face, uh, it takes about 10 seconds, and when you're done, it is incredibly fast. Like, no joke, by the time you've pressed the power button, the screen is probably going to be on. Plus, the built-in backgrounds have some really cool animations. And the final interesting feature is if you just go into settings and search for reverse wireless charging, then you'll get the option, turn your phone around after you enable it, place another phone on, place your earbuds on them, as long as your device supports Qi wireless charging, then it will charge. And I'm glad that OnePlus added that. So yeah guys, that's it for the settings. So 
but have a look at the camera, let's do a speaker test and quickly dive into the specs. Now, in terms of specs, you're getting a Snapdragon 865, 8 or 12 gigabytes of LPDDR5 RAM, UFS 3.0 storage, Wi-Fi 6, dual speakers with Dolby Atmos, new haptics, a 4510mAh battery, 30 watt wired charging and 30 watt wireless charging. You're getting IP68 water and dust resistance, a 120Hz display, a 1440p display with a 10-bit color gamut, and HDR10+. And bear in mind, every OnePlus 8 series model that came out this year comes in 5G. Now, having a look at the cameras, the main camera is a 48 megapixel sensor, and it's quite a large sensor by Sony, which basically means that it's going to have a shallower depth of field, meaning that you will get portrait mode-like shots from the main camera. Now, it's not gonna be as dramatic as portrait mode, which is why it's still an option, but it will actually be natural and it won't include any post work. Uh, you're also getting a 8 megapixel 3x hybrid zoom camera with optical image stabilization, a 48 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with a 120 degree field of view, and a 3 centimeter macro mode, which having briefly used actually seems kind of decent. And then finally, they added a 5 megapixel color filter camera, so good for them, but let's have a look at the photos we just took. Now this is the portrait shot, and you can judge it for yourself, but overall I think it's a pretty good picture. Colors are vibrant, edge detection's on point, and there's good detail. So anyway, just take a look and pause if you want to. So that's it, there is my phone setup, so if you want to know how I set up my phone exactly to look the way it is, then leave a comment and like. But overall, how much is this going to cost you? 800 pounds, or 900 dollars. Bear in mind the 4G S20 comes in at 800 pounds as well, and this is a 5G OnePlus 8 Pro. So have a look at what you get in there in terms of the flagship competition, and before we end the video, here's the speaker test. So, I think we just established that in comparison to other phones, the speakers aren't exactly OnePlus's strong point. But anyway, that is it for the video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Overall, my first impressions on this phone are good. They gave me a great unboxing experience. Automatically, that even made me like the product a little bit more, gave me anticipation for it, and that's why an unboxing experience is important, so you can get the best first impressions. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel small. I'm trying to build it up. Check out my Instagram and Twitter at the Rami Onagar to stay up to date with everything and to get more tech on your feed. And yeah, that is about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Adios. Why do I keep feeling this pain? It's like I'm going for...